Hello, this is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology. Today I wanted to talk about a feature that's been around in Microsoft Dynamics GP for a while now, but it is something that I think is often overlooked and really chronically underused. Uh, that functionality is something called a refund check. So let's take an example of why you might want to use this feature. Uh, let's suppose that one of your customers overpaid you an error. So if they did that, you can take the cash in, you can receive it, and you can leave it in uh, your accounts receivable as a credit on the customer's account. And you can use that credit to offset later sales if the customer approves of all of this. That would be fine. Uh, but it also would not be unreasonable for your customer to ask for a refund instead and ask that you send that money on to them and they can take it back. Well, we could do that. Um, first, let me cover what might be the, what I'll call the slow way of handling that without any without any automation at all. So first what you'd have to do is we could go enter in that cash receivable, of course, but then we could enter in a debit memo in the amount of the credit, and we'd have to use a GL account. We'd pick what we call a suspense account, basically, so that we could uh, handle our accounting there. So now we have a debit memo that matches the credit memo. The next step would be to apply the debit memo to the credit memo so that they net out to zero. Then I would have to make sure I also have a vendor record that corresponds to that original customer record who was overpaid, who overpaid us to begin with. And when I say make a customer record, um, I'm sorry, when I say make a vendor record, that means create it fully. It means putting in the address information, putting everything in on that record so that we can actually use it. And then after I've done all this, I would enter my payables transaction and I could have that transaction have the GL account, which is the same suspense account I used in step one in this example, so that my GL is a wash, and I basically have moved it then from a receivable to a payable. And now, after doing all this housekeeping, I can select the payable for processing. It's five steps or so. I'm kind of summarizing a little bit here. It's not hard, but I have seen many customers of mine who have, because of their business, quite a few different um, needs for refund checks. They come up time to time. It's just they're in a business where there's a lot of transactions happening quickly and it's not uncommon for a customer to overpay. And to refund checks very often gets to be a little bit of a hassle. So you could do it, what I call here, the slow way, or of course, there is a fast way, which is to use the refund check functionality, which I'll show you right now. Okay, so here I am in GP, and I picked a receivable transaction in inquiry window here for one of my customers. I picked a customer called Baker's Emporium, Inc., and I'm only showing the open amounts here. I'll hit redisplay, and you can see I have three different invoices and one credit here for $999.99. .99. Um, so worth mentioning here that refund checks could be used for a, any kind of credit, really. It could be someone paid us, overpaid us an error, or we had a credit in, on account that we issued for some reason, maybe damaged merchandise, or really any reason at all. And if the goal is to take this credit and to refund it to the customer, we have a way to do that. So what I had to do, I'll we'll leave this window here, I'll just minimize it, and we'll come back to that. I did have to do a little bit of setup, not much though. If I go into GP, I can go navigate to the tool setup company, customer vendor setup window. There's a few things that I did pick. First, I picked my suspense account. So remember when I talked about doing this by hand, I said that I would use a GL suspense account to handle the offset so that I could gracefully move my receivable credit to a payable. So I picked an account here. This will all go to zero. So the, the result of all my transactions will be zero in this account. There's a couple of defaults here on the numbering and the description. And I have a checkbox here. I have the option to auto create customers and or vendors if I so choose. I did pick that for this example, but I don't have to. I could always do something differently. I could always, uh, in this other window here on this little relationship tab, I could pick a customer and map it to an existing vendor if I already had both records set up. If I only had one or the other, I could type it in and I could use these buttons at the bottom to create the off the other record. So if I had a vendor, I could have I could pick my vendor, click create customer, and off I go. Or the reverse is also true. I'm going to pretend for a second that that is all. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my auto create instead. 
And you can see the red fields. I do have to pick some class information to use that auto create feature, but that saves me some time and that helps the system know some of the defaults that I'm going to use ahead of time. So that looks really good. So I said, okay. So I know I have a credit for that Baker's Emporium and I am going to come into my sales side and I'm going to click refund checks. New window comes up and I do have to pick a select checks batch ID. So this is what this is going to do is this is going to move that credit we had to a payable and then set me up to pay it all at once. So I did make a batch called refund where I picked my checkbook. I have that all there ready to go. If not, I can just create it, tab off that and make it right now. I'm going to pick specific documents here and I'm going to go pick that customer and I see it, Baker's Emporium Inc. Great, I'll select that. And I will insert that customer record into my window. I go to click uh, insert and I can see here um, this one credit that I saw a moment ago for that $999. And these are editable fields here. So if I wanted to refund only part of that amount, I have that option. But in this case, I'll keep it easy and I'll just click the full amount and say okay. So this window is looking a lot better here and my customer ID, I have my check amount. Uh, there's a debit memo that's going to be used in the process of moving things about, but you'll see here I do not have a vendor record. Now, this is where if I did have a vendor that was existing, but maybe the ID was different or I had never mapped it correctly, I could go find it. But in this example, I'm going to go under the assumption that I know this is a customer, but I know I don't have a vendor. And if actually, if I did have that vendor already mapped, that would have already shown up here. I would know it. But here I can see it's blank and I know with a little bit of checking that that vendor record doesn't exist. So I need to make it. And boy, it'd be a pain to have to type in all that address and phone number and all that other information. But luckily, once I have that row selected, I can click my create vendor button. And this throws me immediately into a vendor maintenance window. That default I had set, I, I checked the box where I was allowing the customer ID to, be, ID to be used also as the vendor ID. So that's happened here. And all my address, all my phone number, everything is set up. Status of this vendor is uh, by default a temporary vendor, which means that I am allowed to delete this vendor record once I'm done with it if I so choose. That'll work for me for this example. So I'll hit save. I'll close that window. And now I have it set. I have my customer record and a newly created vendor record for $999.99 and a debit memo is all queued up to go. Now I only have to pick process to continue. Ask me a question if I'm sure I want to continue and I thank it for that option. And I have some reports that I can see here. I am all queued up. I have my next check number ready to go. I have a batch called refund check. I am ready to go ahead and print my check and get this out immediately. You, so you can see this is so much faster than all those steps that I was talking about doing the quote unquote slow way. Here I just go in, I click refund check, create my vendor with a click, and then I'm off to pay if I'm ready to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print. So I don't have a printer hooked up here, but I'll just print this to the screen. And this is my ugly unformatted check, which you'll see. Which is behind here. And yes, it's kind of ugly looking, but that's okay with me. I'll close it out, pretend I printed that to paper, and I'll go ahead and process the posting. And I'm all done. So that's all complete. And just to prove it, I can close that window and I can go back to that original window I had with my receivables here. And before I hit refresh, if you'll recall, I had my $999 credit. I'm gonna hit redisplay. And you can see, oh, I have a debit memo now that goes exactly with it. And if I were to double space that, I can see here on the second line, the $999 is the document amount, $0 remaining on that. This is on the debit side and the credit also matches. All came clean. I can go look at the GL posting journals. I can see that there was a wash on the GL. I have a check in hand ready to put a stamp on and send out, or actually I could pay the vendor in whatever type of method they're used to being paid. If I wanted to set up that vendor as an EFT vendor, or I had a pre-existing vendor that was set up that way, that was matched to my customer, I could go that way too but this is all ready to go. I have now paid this vendor and taken the credit off the books and did it in a fraction of the time it would have otherwise taken me. This has been David Vallade with Alta Vista Technology. Hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Please visit us on our website at altavistatech.com for more information.